This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Good morning, 9 o'clock. I'm Nicky Campbell. This is your call. Should the time limit for abortions be reduced? The present limit is 24 weeks in England, Wales and Scotland. We, of course, have a different situation in Northern Ireland. The Health Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, supports a 12-week limit because this is when he says life begins. Now, several of his cabinet colleagues support a more modest reduction, as does Dr Peter Saunders from the Christian Medical Fellowship. Try telling a mother who feels her baby kick at 18 to 20 weeks that it's not human. And when we see babies born early, when stabbed in the heel with a needle crying, you cannot deny the humanity of the baby. But Darink Alexic is from the campaign group Abortion Rights and there she disagrees. There hasn't been any improvement in survival rates before 24 weeks. Chances for babies are getting better after 24 weeks, but before that, survival rates are infinitesimally small. The best way to reduce the abortion rate is providing better access to contraception and good sex and relationships education in schools. Well, when do you think life begins? Should the time limit for abortions be reduced? Do you agree with the Secretary of State? Call me 0500 909 693. You're with Five Live from the BBC. So the abortion debate. Let's speak to Professor Wendy Savage. Um, Good morning to you, campaigner on women's rights. Hello. Good morning. And uh, also um, Josephine Quintavalli uh, joins us, who is a member of the Pro-Life Alliance, as they are called. Josephine Quintavalli, what do you think the abortion limit should be? Well, we don't um, think there should be any abortion. Uh, We believe, uh, which I think most scientists do, otherwise they're rather ignorant of their biology, that life begins at the moment of conception. Anybody who has um, IVF treatment is very excited when a new embryo is created. They know it's a human life which is going through its its natural process of development. So we're not in favour of any uh, upper limit on abortion, we are campaigning always to see the end of abortion, just as others have in the past campaigned to see the end of slavery. But at the moment, the position that um, Jeremy Hunt's taken is very interesting. Can I Russia stop you there? Can I, the up- can I stop you there? I will, yeah. of course, let you expand upon that point about Jeremy Hunt. But you said something. You said a number of interesting things, as you always do. But you said there, you, 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 as with the end of slavery, do you equate the what we, what you would see as uh, the evil of abortion with with the the human evil of slavery? Yes, I think we've dehumanized the human embryo and the developing child in the womb to the same extent that whenever man has wanted to oh. attack and, um, and be ruthless against others, you diminish and you try and re, re, um, redefine what you're, what you're dealing with. The so moment of conception. At the moment that people talk all the time about the fetus. Now, the fetus does mean unborn child in Latin, but we well know that it diminishes the emotional impact of the developing child. And we always use the word unborn child. Of course it's not born, but it's an unborn child going through the process of human life, which we all go through. Right. So uh, th- th- that millisecond after the moment of conception, as the gametes have come together, that is a human life, is it? It is a human yeah. life. And I mean, biologically, that's indisputable. I think the argument biologically is what value we attribute to it and at what stage can we... Um, you know, enter into a balancing act between uh, the, the rights of the unborn child and the rights of the mother. And we say that's an unfair and uh, unacceptable balancing act. The child has every right to protection, whether in the womb, in the petri dish, or newborn. A newborn child is as vulnerable as you could possibly get in, in, in the human condition. Professor, no newborn child could survive without our help. Professor Wendy Savage, the, the child in the petri dish... That's quite a phrase, isn't it, Wendy Savage? I agree with Josephine that life begins at conception, but nature is prodigal, and at least 50% of fertilised ova um, are lost before the first missed period. And then another 10% of those pregnancies will spontaneously miscarry by 12 weeks. And it's not an unborn child. The English language is extremely rich, and we have words for different things. And we call it an embryo once the um, various parts of the body have been formed. Before that, we have um, the fertilized ovum, the blastocyst, um, and then after the embryo, we start talking about the fetus. And, you know, we have fetal monitoring, electronic fetal monitoring, Um, when the woman is in labor. And 
I, I really do think, I mean, I'm delighted here, Josephine, coming out and telling us that they are against all abortion because we know that this emphasis on the time limits is just a tactic in the um, uh, battle that they are waging against a woman's right to choose whether or not to continue with her pregnancy. And 80% of the population, when polled, for at least the last 30 years, have said that they agree that the decision on whether to carry on with a pregnancy is, should be made by the woman in conjunction with her doctor. What the anti-abortion lobby, of which Josephine is one, <coughs> believe is that women should be compulsorily pregnant and that they want to force their views on the rest of society, which do not hold them. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't worry. Let me, let me bring in a call here, a couple of calls, as you've set out your stalls, both of you, very clearly. Let's bring Tony in Warwickshire and Linda in Coventry. Good morning. Thank you for, thank you for calling us, and we welcome any, anyone who calls us, and you, you don't have to use your real names if it's a subject that you feel very upset about and you, you want to remain anonymous. We'll respect that. But I think, Tony, that is your name. Good morning. It is, yeah, and I'm probably, um, I'm probably more passionate about this than anybody else because um, my partner gave birth to a 23-week-old plus one day baby on uh, in may this year well blimey and she survived she survived yeah she's now um just coming up to six months old she's just about reached um what is called classified as normal birth weight she's just under seven pounds now but when she was born she was 590 grams tiny uh, yeah the size of your hand mm. um and i think this step of like uh, making abortion from 12 weeks is probably a step too far. We always seem to do things in big leaps. What probably would be more appropriate based on medical evidence is to reduce it down to 20 weeks. Life starts from day one. We know that and understand that. But viable life, and that's the key here, viable life probably is around about 22 weeks plus two plus three days. And that's when the, our medical teams now can actually make or help um, su survival rates higher. We obviously have been a party to quite a number of uh, very premature births over the last six months and have seen babies come in at 25 weeks, 26 weeks that have not survived. What's your little um, girl called? Sorry, I, I do beg your pardon, it slipped by me. What's your little girl called? Nadine. Nadine, okay. And how is, uh, how is Nadine now? She's doing really well. She's um, she's had some, you know, some major upheavals over the last six months. You know, she was given oxygen for probably the first ten weeks of her life to obviously, um, you know, start formulating the lungs. Um, she's had two major eye surgeries because at 23 weeks the eye stopped growing, so she had to have some laser treatment, and um, because of the laser treatment. Um, the retina was actually starting to detach from the eye, so she had to have a six hours of eye surgery. But apart from that, and she's got a bit, of, she suffers from reflux as well. Um, apart from that, she looks like a normal baby. She's not a very good sleeper at the moment. She's uh, obviously struggling with her sleep, but that's, I think that's the same with any, any young baby. That's part of the course, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but the reality is, why don't we do, why don't we do this in stages? I understand people who are pro-life, I totally understand them and, and, and concur with their thoughts that life does begin from day one. As soon as that, um, those two cells join together and split, that is the formulation of life. But it's viable life. What is a viable life? And I think the reality is 20 weeks, you're not going... I mean, until we actually improve our medical care, 20 weeks, you're not going to get a viable baby. And, and the reality is as well is there's going to be so many things wrong with that. You've potentially got cerebral palsy, hearing, uh, eyes, spinal breathing there's so there's a whole load of uh, you know things that could be potentially wrong with that that baby wendy savage is, wendy savage what oh. do you what do you say to, to linda i'll bring you in in a minute are you there linda yes i am good morning morning Look, wendy savage 23 weeks nadine 23 weeks and one day wendy well 15 percent of babies at 23 weeks will survive according to the epicure study which are a big They've done it twice in 1995 and 2006. So is there an argument for moving to 20 weeks? No. Right. Most of the women 
who come after 20 weeks have compelling reasons why they need to uh, terminate their pregnancies. A quarter of them is because there is a congenital abnormality so that the, uh, the fetus is damaged in some way. And it's up to the parents to decide, do we want to continue with a pregnancy uh, which um, will be lifelong care, as, as your last caller said, with cerebral palsy or um, other abnormalities. Well, and, but that's just... <coughs> and the, the, you know, you, you un- I'm sure you understand the arguments against that. Anyone listening with cerebral palsy right now mm. might be taking some exception to what you're saying. Right, well, they're in I'm any way a lesser person. It, I'm not expressing it very well. I'm talking about really severe handicaps where you have a, a, a child who's deaf, blind, cannot walk that kind of uh, really severe damage may occur. Now, at 22 weeks, it's 1%. Uh, there were three babies that survived um, in the 2006 cohort. One of those developed normally at three years of age. One of them was moderately handicapped, and one of them was severely handicapped. And t- to change the law on abortion on the basis of these small numbers without thinking about the needs of the woman who's requesting the abortion, 25% of whom will have a, a, an abnormality of the, the fetus is, is quite wrong. OK, and well, we're, well, we're going to speak to Linda and, and Sandra in a second, but Josephine Quintavalli, I'll bring you back just before we have the travel news, but I'll, I just want to lay down some facts and figures for our listeners. The 24-week limit applies to England, Wales and Scotland, as we know. Abortion is illegal in Northern Ireland, except in exceptional medical circumstances, such as when the mother's health is at risk. There were nearly so why don't we do that in the UK? Sorry? So why don't we do that in England, Wales? What, have it uh, make it I- illegal except in ex- exceptional in, medical in circumstances? The, Nikki, can Absolutely. I come in? In a second, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Okay, okay, that's, that's your view. The ro- no, I mean, in a second, Josie, okay. I just want to do this stat here. Yeah, okay. Uh, there were nearly 190,000 abortions for women in England and Wales last year, 91% of which were carried out before the 13th week of pregnancy. 91% according to the Department of Health figures. Josephine, go on. Well, this is what I think we have to distinguish between very carefully about what we do intentionally and what happens unfortunately and accidentally and the premature baby who's born early doesn't represent a correct parallel for abortion. 98% of the abortions in the United Kingdom are not performed for disability but I think the public needs to know too that we have a discriminatory aspect in our abortion law whereby you can in in normal circumstances abortions available up to 24 weeks but up to birth for disability and I feel you know how does that Uh, equates with our equality legislation. We did draw attention to this after the Paralympics and said, rightly, we've been triumphing the success of disabled athletes. Um, But we do need to look at this issue. Is our attitude to disability really genuine if we've got a different um, upper limit for abortion? Another quick point for you, though. What, what, What does this say about our attitude to women's rights? If a woman is raped or is raped by her father and is pregnant and you say to her, you should not have an abortion. Well, the issue of rape is obviously very, very, uh, a very dramatic issue. I have counselled, I worked for 20 years counselling women in crisis pregnancy and I did counsel in particular one woman who'd been raped actually by her employer uh, and I asked her, she went ahead with the pregnancy with a lot of help from people and I asked her three years later whether I could talk about what had happened to her and she said why and I said because you've done something very courageous in bringing up this child and loving him. And the the issue of how that child had been conceived had disappeared from her memory. Okay, we're going to speak to Linda and Sandra in just a second. Thank you so much for hanging on. More to come from our guests as well. It's 9.18. Here's Michelle. Uh, let's, we've got Rachel in Liverpool, Sandra in Paisley, and Linda in Coventry. Thank you all so much for calling us. Rachel, good morning. What, what's your story? Good morning. Um, I was a student at the time, um, and... Um, found myself to be pregnant and went through the very difficult decision and that and it was a very difficult and traumatic decision about what I was going to do and I thought about it for a very long time and I came to the conclusion at the time that the best thing for me to do was to have a termination or, or abortion um, and it's a decision that I have thought about over the years but also I have decided that I made the right decision at the time very 
the right decision. I have two beautiful children who I adore. Um, I have a career, um, a husband, um, and I, I do feel for, for everyone making a decision. It's not an easy decision to, for any any woman to make, whether they be sixteen, whether they be twenty, whether they be thirty, um, to go through that decision. And it sometimes takes a long time to actually reach the decision that you're, you're going to make. So I, I'm very strongly against reducing the, the time limit on, on termination. Even by maybe four weeks to 20 weeks? or I think sometimes by the time somebody you, you realise that you're pregnant, um, it can, can take weeks. And then to then talk about, think about the decision and maybe talk about with people if you can talk about it. Because very often women can't talk to anybody about this decision. Um, it sometimes takes up to that, that time length. And I certainly wouldn't want to restrict any woman on making that decision. We're into that. I mean, you say if you had gone on and had that particular child, you would not have the two beautiful children that you have now. Then we're, in, we're into that sort of moral labyrinth, aren't we, about a f- philosophical hall of mirrors, aren't we? Yeah? And what would have happened? It's, 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 it's a very personal decision for mm. any woman to make. And, and I, I understand that people have different viewpoints. Um, and some people feel very moralistic about it. So, but I'm, I, going, I, I, I'm going to bring sorry. Sandra in. Stay, no, please stay there. I, I feel you probably have something else to say. Listen to Sandra first. Sandra, what would you, what, what, what would you like to say this morning? Rachel, and I can't imagine well, what, what, what happened to me. Um, I have I had the son, or I have a son with a rare condition called Towns Block Syndrome, so I decided to stop my family. I thought I'd get sterilised, but the doctor said, oh, to take the Mirena coil, which I did, and it's 99.9% effective. But I was the one in the thousand women who got pregnant with it. Um, and I, had, I only found out at 26 weeks and I wasn't a 16 year old I was a mature woman who I thought would know but I was being pregnant you know and because the, the impact of having another child on our family has been so devastating my, my oldest my, my youngest son who I loved a bit Callum who was born because of that he has autism as well mm. so it's just a way it affects our family dynamics but and I, I love him to bits but I wouldn't have chosen to have him you know what I mean he's been part of my life now and I love him but and that's the reason because contraception is not 100% effective, unfortunately, you know. No, 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 it's, it's not. It's not at all. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes, especially when you're younger, you, you, you assume mm-hmm. that um, it is going to be that. Um, mm-hmm. And at the time, when, when I found, personally found out I was pregnant, it was a huge, huge stress mm-hmm. to go mm-hmm. through. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, with one of my children um, that I have, I have, I went through the whole situation of, of, of maybe um, that child being being ill when she when she had been born. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I think as a female, you go through lots of stresses, being either going through pregnancy or, or not going through it. It is a, it is a very mm-hmm. traumatic time at, at every level. There can be mm-hmm. I know a, a life changing process. Yes. Um, and I, I, I certainly wouldn't, I, I would never, um, there were some people who very feel very, very strongly that the whole uh, concept of you know, life begins at, at conception, um, uh, life begins when you know, the small fingernails, life begins. But for, for me personally, I have certainly have never looked back at the decision I made. I have thought about it. Um, but I, I, it certainly hasn't hung over me. No, I, I'm very clear that it, it is the right decision at that yeah. moment in time to make. Let me bring Linda in as well. Uh, Linda, yeah. has it, the decision has hung over you, hasn't it? It has. I, I, did a, uh, I was made to have an abortion when I was 18. Um, then I met um, my husband and uh, I lost a little boy in 1975. He was two days old. Um, I blame myself. My, oh. um, um, and that's just awful. It's a dreadful um, thing to go through. And it just shows that it just shows that the, the, the women, the women, when we make, when, we, when women make that decision to do that, it's not, it's not an easy one. It's not yeah. an easy option. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hear more. Let's hear from Linda. Let's let, let's let's give Linda a little bit of space yeah. to tell the rest of her story. Um, uh, we had him buried at Wimmore Road, and. Uh, then I had uh, a daughter and a son, and then I had another son, and I lost him two days old as well. Um, we attended the grave for about eight years, but after I lost my last son, I couldn't cope with it. I had, I just pretended it just didn't happen to me. I blanked everything all out. I kept having uh, breakdowns, tried to commit suicide, and. 
I just couldn't cope with it. I just couldn't cope with anything. Uh, in, do, you think uh, that, do, you think, do you think it comes down to the fact that your parents made you have the abortion? Do you think a lot? Do you think all the problems with hindsight come down to that? What what you might see as the you know that fateful decision? I think so. I just don't know. I just blame myself for everything. I am seeing a counsellor for my depression, and she's been very good. And I've, been, I've told her everything, and I made up my mind to go back to the, the um, to Canley, uh, to, uh, to um, Winmore Road uh, to see my son again. But when we got there in March this year, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find anything we put with his name on. Uh, I couldn't find his grave at all. So I went to the caretaker's uh, wife um, and I asked her whether, if she could tell me where my son was. And she said, well, I would have to get in touch with Candy Crematorium, which I did do. Um, I spoke to a lady and she said she was very busy, but she would meet me on a certain day. But she didn't turn up, a grave digger turned up and he showed me a little bit of grass. Nothing on it. And... I said to him, well, that can't be, that, that just can't be. I said, we bought a plot of land in 1975 with a 99-year lease, and you're telling me it's that little bit there. So he said, well, if I wasn't satisfied, he took my name, he took my address, and my t- telephone number, and a, a lady got in touch with me, and she was uh, um, the movement lady, and I met her, in Moor Road, and she went and showed me another plot. And I said, that is not the first plot I was shown in the first place, but she disagreed with me, and she said it was. And I said, but all them things on that plot is not mine. Nothing on there is mine. Well, do you know what this, do you know what this, uh, you know, Linda, it was such a powerful story. Do you know what this shows? And let me ask, actually, while, before we move on, Wendy Savage, the campaigner for, for women's rights and for abortion rights Professor Savage what we've heard just shows how this is such a sensitive issue such a powerful issue and it just affects different people in different ways doesn't it yes it does and that's why I think the, the law <laughs> needs to be changed so that abortion is no longer a criminal process um, if it doesn't conform with the law it is a medical personal process and I was very moved by um, the the story of, of Sandra and of, of Linda and I think that the bureaucracy uh, I mean it, it's shocking um, that, uh, that this should happen to Linda but also one of the things about a woman's right to choose is that she must be able to choose and the doctor must pick up when she is being forced into doing something which isn't her choice and therefore, particularly with young women, you need to have the time to explore whether they really are making a free choice or whether they're being pressured into it by their parents or their, um, their partner. And if the woman has made a free choice, she's very unlikely to regret it. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks all so far. Very uh, greatly appreciated people getting in touch with the programme. 0500 909 693. We will continue to discuss abortion in the next half hour of your call. And the question we ask, should the time limit for abortions be reduced? Present limit, 24 weeks in England, Wales and Scotland. It's illegal in Northern Ireland, save for exceptional medical circumstances. We are going to speak to uh, an MP about this in a second. It is Mark Pritchard, Conservative MP, Vice Chairman of the Parliamentary Pro-Life Group. Good morning. Morning, Nicky. Um, let's have uh, on as well. We've, we've still, let me just remind you as well, we've still got uh, Wendy Savage, Professor Wendy Savage, campaigner for women's rights up. Uh, on the line and we're going to speak to wendy in london and gabrielle in essex gabrielle good morning to you hello mm-hmm. wendy are you there as well yes, i'm here excellent uh, gabrielle you go first but, well i just think it why we have this punitive approach to women's bodies and i think if anybody could see the results of forcing women to carry on and give birth when they give give birth to very premature babies to see the results These pro-life people would have you believe that everything's rosy in the garden. And as a midwife, I have seen the results. As a health visitor with 30 years' experience, I have unfortunately seen 
these children grow um, and not prosper, not thrive. And these families, everything gets sacrificed on the altar of these children's needs. And it, it just is tragic. And a lot of these parents will say to you, if I had known how it was going to be, I would not have done this. I would not have put my child through this. I would not have done this. Mark Pritchard, how do you react to that? Well, of course, the Secretary of State for Health was suggesting bringing the current term limit down from 24 weeks to 12 weeks. Um, we've also had the Culture Secretary and the Home Secretary uh, suggest their personal opinion, of course, that... Yeah, 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 yeah. We, term- we, we, we've been through all this. Yeah, exactly. Re- but, re- react to what you just okay, heard. Well, from- well, well we're not, you know, nobody's saying uh, abortion should be stopped. Nobody's saying that um, early uh, term abortion should be stopped. Um, all that uh, many members of Parliament, reflecting, by the way, two-thirds of public opinion... Uh, are saying is that the law is currently um, lagging behind uh, breakthroughs in uh, neonatal care, scientific breakthroughs, and the survivability of children 22 to 24 weeks is um, now at around 71%, whereas 10 years ago it was in around 36%. So science has broken through, the law's lagging behind, and I think it's time to update the law. We need a debate about it. What, what's wrong in a democracy about having an up-to-date debate about abortion? Indeed. Nick, Nicky, can I just come back there? By all means. Um, could, could he produce his research to back that up? Because I'm afraid the research will show that unfortunately, and I'm sure Wendy will be, will be able to back me up on this, unfortunately, and, and the research is there to back me up, 50% of those neonates under, under 25, 26 weeks will die. Of the 50% who survive, um, so, so, okay, so, so take 100% of the babies who go into special care who are under 26 weeks. 50% of those are not going to make it, okay? So the 50% who get left, of those, 50% are going to have a very high degree well, of morbidity. I'm going, going to bring to Wendy in London in as well who's called us. Hello, Wendy. Thank you for calling us this morning. Hello. First of all, I want to say that I'm not talking about survival rates and I'm not talking about disabled babies. I'm talking about normal babies who've got irresponsible parents. My, my, oh. my daughter-in-law oh. had great trouble getting pregnant. We've been, watching, we've been watching this pregnancy week by week as the babies develop. When she has a scan, they say the babies are fine, they're moving around, they're very lively, they're very little, but they're alive. They're babies. Don't call them fetuses. Don't 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 make out that they're not human. They're little human beings, little human beings desperate to come into this world. How can anybody, anybody want to get, get rid of these children? It, it's awful. It's awful. Um, the Dr. Well, Reverend... The, 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 the only reason, the only reason that you might want to have an abortion is, is for the child's sake. For the child's sake, because the child will have a horrible life, because the child will be disabled, but not not for a normal child. And for that, a normal child, you know well, when a child's normal. Nikki, you know when a child's point. normal from from 14 weeks. Well, OK, I'm going to bring in Dr Evan Harris on that point to speak to you, <sighs> Wendy in London and Mark Pritchard. Uh, you're shaking your head. Uh, I am shaking your head. Oh, you've got a, a, a webcam in here. No, because um, uh, Evan, doc, Dr. Evan Harris and I have never agreed on this. But you uh, said it was good to have a debate. Well, it is good to have oh, a debate, okay. and I disagree with him on, no, the, on, the, on the points. Don't shake your head. Embrace the fact that there's <laughs> vive la différence. I'm uh, shaking my head to disagree. I think even in the, the democracy you can shake your head. Y- 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 yes, yes, you can. Thank yes, you, Dickie. Thank uh, you. <laughs> you've been around long enough to know that. <laughs> it's not as bad as uh, Central Weekend Live or whatever it was. That's, going back, that's going back a bit. Ev- Evan Harris, respond to what Wendy and London well, I just said. wanted to agree with Mark Pritchard that it's always good to have a debate about these things. Uh, and I'm sorry if that's an agreement. I, I know Mark wanted to disagree before I'd oh. even spoken. Uh, he knows that uh, I think that it's important that these things are debated. But they must be debated because it, it's a matter of the, the welfare, the health and welfare of 
you know, hundreds of thousands of women. All right, we're having that uh, debate, and you heard from debated. Wendy in London. You heard, wait, right, wait, wait you heard. Excuse, excuse me, excuse me, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about uh, people who can't look after their children. I'm talking about normal people. If you don't want to have a baby, let someone else have the opportunity to have it. There's plenty of people out there who are desperate to have children, can't have them of their own. Let, if you don't want to have it, let somebody adopt yes. it Yes, adoption, make adoption an option. Yeah. So if I can just yes, finish my first sentence. An option, thank you. Don't go around killing little babies. Of course, adoption. adoption. Dr. Evan, adoption. Dr. Evan Harris. I, I mean, I, I do need to be able to make my point. Uh, adoption is, of course, an option, but what you can't do in a, uh, in, in a free society is force women to go through nine months of gestation and force them to give birth against their will in order to take the baby away and from them. The we have, we are in a, hang on, just Wendy, say, Wendy just let um, Evan Harris finish his point. My point. Civilised countries don't do that, OK? Now, obviously, we want to minimise... I don't the number think it's of very civilised to kill a baby, sorry. Oh, hang on. If, you, if I can just finish my point. It, 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 we need to make sure that we reduce the number of unwanted pregnancies, and we do that well, by having better women, sex education. Wendy, 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 have, Wendy, have contraception. Wendy, you've made your points very powerfully. Let, let Evan Harris just finish a sentence we, or two. We, we reduce the number of abortions by reducing the number of unwanted pregnancies, in turn by improving sex education, uh, like they have in other parts of Europe, where more information is given, not less, and improved access to contraception. And the very same people who oppose abortion, which they're entitled to do on religious grounds, also argue for more ignorance when it comes to sex education well, and I less don't. access I to think contraception. Young women should, I think young women should be educated. I think they should well, have I'm, access to, to, to yeah, I contraception. I absolutely agree with you. Now, this, what I was, Nick, Nicky, am I allowed to make a point? I absolutely agree with you, but can I just make the point to Mark that it's absolutely essential, and to Jeremy Hunt, if we're going to have this debate, people don't make up scientific information. You're entitled to your opinion, Mark, and the Secretary of State for Health, but you're not entitled to your own facts. Okay, well, going, we are going to okay. wait, wait. We are going no to address the we are going to address the scientific issues, and I'd like to do that with both of you because it's very sure. important. We're going to bring that on. We're going to bring that through, Wendy. Right now, though, we have to go back to Aberystwyth. This is Five Live Breakfast. Your call. All right, we've got Dr. Evan Harris, Vice Chairman of the Liberal Democrat Federal Policy Committee, who, of course, has a scientific background. And um, I'm not I'm not sure if you do or, or you don't, Mark Pritchard, MP. But uh, no, I don't. sorry, no, I don't. No, I don't. Mm. What's your understanding of the science? Well, let's uh, look at the scientific facts. The, fa uh, the fact is that uh, there have been several cases um, around the world and, and, and a few in the UK of uh, babies uh, being born at 21 weeks uh, plus uh, and still surviving. Uh, so it's clear that um, there has been uh, breakthroughs uh, uh, in improving neonatal care and it is clear because the evidence is there. These children are out there uh, living and uh, some years ago uh, that would not have been the case, and that is why I don't think it's particularly controversial to say that we should have a law that ref uh, reflects uh, scientific know-how today. And uh, if people don't believe what I say, they can go on the internet and, mm. and just Google baby survives at 21 weeks, and they'll see many cases around the world and cases here in the UK. Uh, and therefore, the law is lagging behind science. We need it to catch up. Mm -hmm. Evan Harris. Well, that's wrong on almost every level. Firstly, if you're going to use what's called viability, fetal viability, that is the ability of the fetus to live uh, uh, without major disability independently of the mother, so it has some rights to be considered, and many MPs, I accept, probably the majority, base their, well, a significant number base their view on that rather than simply supporting 24 weeks for its own sake. What's absolutely clear is that there's no justification for 12 weeks, OK? So the debate would be, has it dropped to 22 weeks, say, OK? Right. So for Jeremy Hunt to say scientific evidence moves him to think that 12 weeks is right shows that he has... It's yeah, just Evan, away Evan, with the fairies. are That's you then suggesting... View, Evan, 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 Evan yeah. are you then suggesting, and if you are, I think it's a helpful recognition of somebody with a scientific background like yourself that science has moved on are you then well, I was in, well I was, are you then inferring that even you would accept that it is now time to see the term no. reduced to 20 no, i'm not 22. inferring i'm gonna I don't, you don't have to infer or imply well, great anything. okay i'm going to tell you what i think if i great. finish sure. so so firstly the debate over viability is is irrelevant 12 weeks that's a com completely and he admitted uh, a religious view and he shouldn't have said are based on the scientific evidence. And it worries me that the Secretary of State for Health doesn't know the difference between religion and science. 
The second thing is, if we're looking at viability, there is a massive study being conducted called Epicure 2 by, uh, with, with returns from every neonatal unit in the country, and that demonstrated very clearly, as set out in a as yeah. Common Science and Technology Select Committee report, that there was no change in viability. But Evan, we only we only have a we only have a brief amount of time today. You and I, have, you, and and you and I have both also, read those reports. There Could, are no cases <laughs> of twenty-one week survivors either. Well, I well I'm sorry. With you. Well, it's not you a matter of disagreeing with me. Anecdote: There it, is no there, <laughs> no child has been born at twenty-one weeks. I think it was twenty uh, uh, a twenty-one a week, weeks. six days, or something like that. If you want to no. you know, argue about Neil's that. in Merseyside, That's everyone, wrong. listen. Neil's in That's Merseyside. Wrong. Neil, no, okay, we know you're saying it's wrong. He's saying it's right. We're we we can all check it out later on exactly. and find out who's right. Uh, let, we're not getting anywhere. Neil exactly. in Merseyside. Good morning, Neil. Uh, good morning, Nikki. Good morning, Evan, and all the others. Um, I'm a lawyer, and I'm involved in representing a number of groups that are on the pro-life side, and I'm getting concerned by the fact that there is there seems to be an attempt by a certain number of organisations to try and prevent the debate, and that's why I'm really delighted we're having a proper debate the programme this morning. I've been contacted by a number of students in various student unions, and I'm trying to collate the cases at the moment, who were refused the right to have a pro-life stalls in their freshers week on the basis that the student union's policy was pro-abortion or pro-choice as it would be part. I've represented a woman who gave, who was in, employed by the NHS. She gave a colleague, not a patient, a colleague, a booklet where women talked about their experiences of abortion and the effect it had on them. She ultimately ended up being found guilty of gross misconduct and sacked from the NHS, and I'm representing nurses who are now coming under increasing pressure within the NHS to participate in abortion. So I th my, my real concern that I'm raising this morning is that there is a real debate on abortion that I think has come out very clearly from this, but within certainly within the NHS, and now it would appear within universities, there is an attempt to try and close down that Absolutely, and uh, and in fact, it's been very, very difficult to extract some figures from the Department of Health, and people will know that it's taken uh, some uh, pretty serious uh, law cases to uh, to get those. I, I think it's appropriate that we go to somebody for in a minute, to Evan Harris. But I think it's appropriate that we go to Paula Franklin from Mary Stopes on this. Paula Franklin, good morning. Good morning. Um, your reaction to the the allegation that debate is being sort of closed down and those who do have a position of which similar to Marx and, uh, uh, and, and perhaps even stronger, they're, they're uh, being marginalised, Paula Franklin. Um, well, I wasn't really aware that that was happening. I certainly would, would welcome uh, the debate. Um, I suppose my preference would be that we have a debate that is informed, um, and that uh, has a... Well, everyone a, says that, don't they? Whatever they think. Well, yeah, they I, I suppose... They have different I mean, information. I, a, lot of, a lot of discussion about science, which is obviously important in the evidence, but I'm not hearing much uh, so far about women, um, about the women who are involved in the very difficult circumstances that they find themselves in, the very difficult choices that they have to make. Um, this is... This is a, a, always a difficult choice for a woman, regardless of, of the stage of the pregnancy that she's, that she's carrying. Um, and I think that's something that ought to be included in the debate as we have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we do need a uh, legal framework. And uh, the, the point that the Secretary of State, I think, was making is that the law does need to catch up with science. I think there also needs to be a wider debate about the number of abortions, nearly 200,000 uh, in England and Wales uh, last year, uh, and the number of women having repeat abortions, some having up to seven okay. abortions. If they were to override yeah. the parliamentary system that we have in this country, in the mm. system of making okay. laws, and all of a sudden a, a man was to come along with a magic wand and give it to you, Mark Pritchard, and say, right, you are now, you are now going to ordain, the, and you are, go you are going to set the abortion limit in the ideal world and we will we will carry on with that where would you set it mark Pritchard? well to uh, quote aristotle you know politics is the art of the possible so no 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 we're not well, talking about the possible we're talking about what you in your heart would like well in an ideal world you'd have uh, the nuclear family uh, all over the world no divorce no abortions no child's out of wedlock no uh, children put into orphanages no but we don't li we we'd excuse me 
no gay couples and well, civil excuse, partnerships excuse me, that is, to that is, uh, well don't make a great assumption uh, uh, Evan forgive me uh, I, I've said what I've said in answer to the question the fact no, is we don't live we don't we don't live in an, families that are we, don't, we, woman only. we don't live in an ideal world so therefore we have to uh, deal with what we have and the 12 fact weeks is, would you welcome 12 no, weeks no I, I, I want to campaign for 20 weeks because I think is uh, this a wedge that, to bring it down even further though well I, I, I think that it would be very healthy uh, in each parliament to have a debate on this issue to Bring make sure down, that we are down. up to date with science. Yeah, let's let's. I agree. You know, I agree with that. Can I just say I agree with that? Position. The science, I, but you mustn't misrepresent the science, and that's why the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynaecology and the British Medical Association, who are not pro-abortion, okay, they're pro the health of people and making sure the science is not misrepresented, agree and agreed with the, the Common Select Committee that on the latest data the viability has not diminished. But I want to talk about this free speech issue. Well, what about those babies who are living share. at 21 weeks, Evan? Yeah. They, they are not. So there are no. So then, uh, not the measure of viability. So Nikki, no, I hope you'll invite Dr. Evan Harris you're to wrong. come and back on to and apologise to your listeners. Data. It's <laughs> very important that we don't debate science on the basis of anecdote. You look at the. I, I've data read all the reports you've read study. in Parliament, Evan. I've read all the scientific reports. What's your point about? I tell you what I'm going to do. I tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to. I am going to bring in Brian and Chippen. And Brian, good morning. Make a quick point yeah. if you could. I know it's not an easy thing to say in a debate like this, but we're edging towards the end. Brian, good morning. Uh, good morning. Just, just very briefly, my wife and I, uh, we've got uh, two children, and uh, our youngest, um, we, my wife had a, a miscarriage uh, at eleven weeks. Uh, she fell pregnant again, and we decided we'd go for an early scan. We had the scan, and we were told that uh, our child wasn't developing properly, that there was an ab abnormally large nuchal gland, that our child had an exomphalus, the skull wasn't developing properly, and all sorts of manners of uh, problems. We were told that there was a, a distinct possibility of Patar syndrome, um, Downs and Edwards, and if you know anything about those conditions, they're not good. For the oh, so, so how, how did how did um, he or she, the little baby, turn out? Well, perfect. Um, right. we, we, she carried it to term, and uh, there was absolutely nothing wrong with with our child. And what, what's really disturbing for me is the health professional at the time told us uh, after the 20-week scan, we, we went for the amniocentesis tests and all the rest of it. The health professional, uh, the consultant said, we know very little about fetal development, which is really concerning. No, well, what the doctor meant was that these, these, these scans are not absolutely predictive and they can only give you their best judgment and the likelihood of serious deformity. It's very good news that sometimes what you think might lead to a problem does not but without going into the womb it's very hard to judge well listen and thank you uh, uh, we're, 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 thank you so much um, uh, Evan Harris for your contributions thank you very much for that call Brian very thoughtful call Mark Pritchard thank you uh, for um, for coming on this morning and uh, for those who called us as well uh, let me just tell you about Oktoberfest we're going to be in, Sh in Sheffield and if you'd like to come and watch your call we're coming live from the Crucible the famous Crucible Theatre next Thursday uh, this Thursday talking about the North-South Divide